Welcome back to Talking Europe. Well, another record-breaking ruling from the EU Commission for Competition, Margaret Vestager, has fined US search giant Google 2.4 billion euros for breaching EU antitrust rules. And she's given the company until mid-September to change its practices or it could face more monetary penalties. Some say it's a win for small to medium-sized companies who are often overshadowed by multinational giants. Others, however, say the decision is one that could stifle innovation. We'll be speaking to Commission Investigator in just a few minutes, but first, Diptyka Laurent gives us a quick summary of what this ruling is all about. A record 2.4 billion euro fine and a strong message to Silicon Valley no company is above the EU's antitrust laws. The European Commission accuses Google of abusing its market dominance. What Google has done is illegal under EU antitrust rules. It has denied other companies the chance to compete on the merits and to innovate. And most importantly, it has denied European consumers the benefits of competition, genuine choice and innovation. The verdict follows a seven-year investigation after several companies, including Yelp, TripAdvisor and European shopping comparison site Kelku, filed complaints about Google's operations. The breaches relate to banner ads featuring at the top of search result pages, considered prime real estate for online marketing firms. Google is accused of favoring its own shopping comparison service to the detriment of rivals. Google says it is simply making it easier for consumers to find what they're looking for. The search engine giant has also been charged with abusing its powerful position in two other cases, one involving its Android mobile operating system and the other pertaining to AdSense, Google's advertising tool. The tech giant has 90 days to end its unfair practices or face further fines. Google says it's planning to appeal the decision. Well, joining us now, we have the EU Competition Commissioner, Ms. Margaret Vestager. Uh, Ms. Vestager, thanks so much for your time and joining us here on France 24. We've just been looking at that Google ruling. The EU, your office, says it was a move aimed at protecting EU consumers. But Google says, really, there's nothing to, be, to protect them from. They're just trying to make things easier, make choices more available. Yes, but that is for consumers to decide. And if you promote yourself and demote your rivals, then it becomes very, very difficult for consumers actually to choose between different uh, companies uh, delivering services to them. It, however, when you look at the, the search engine Google, people make a choice, a deliberate choice to use that. There are other alternatives available. There's Microsoft's Bing, there's DuckDuckGo, there's a few different services out there, yet I believe over 90% of Europeans choose Google. Yes, and that of course is a, is a great success for Google. Uh, and I think people choose Google products when it comes to general search because they like it. And in Europe, we congratulate you when you have success. But when you become dominant, well, then, of course, it is very difficult for other companies to do anything. So the dominant company gets a special responsibility not to misuse all this strength that has been given to it uh, by consumer choice. A responsibility not to, uh, you know, promote themselves in their own market or in neighboring market, which is what we have found that they have done. Because at the same time, Google, I imagine, is the one that invested in its product. In a way, is it not normal for, if you see it as a, as a shop, as a, a supermarket, is it not normal for that shop to promote its own products first and foremost? Oh, yes, of course. But the thing is that when you're dominant, uh, when you do a Google search that you would like to buy something, well, very often you would like to compare products. Uh, and maybe you would like to use uh, uh, the Google Shopping comparison. Maybe you would like to use Twenge or Kelku or Price Runner or any of the others. The problem is that because of Google's illegal behavior, it has become very, very difficult uh, to find Twenge or Kelku or Price Runner or any of the others. So how can Google change its practices to fall in line when, then with the EU rules? You know, how can it ensure that people are getting on that first page or whatever a, a sufficient number of choices and I imagine different choices every time there's a, there's a search? How, how does that work? Because often it's on terms of popularity uh, that that pushes things to the top of the list. Yes, but of course we, we checked that. We checked if it's just relevance that puts a, 
a, uh, a thing on, on top of a page, if it is just by relevance that people click. But we see that positioning actually do matter. And this is why we have ordered Google to stop uh, putting themselves uh, at the top of the first page and putting rivals on average on the fourth uh, page of your search result. We have said this has to stop. You have to apply a principle of equal treatment. Uh, but obviously you have a number of choices as to how you will concretely do that using your algorithm, uh, using your web design, that is completely up to you. Uh, so putting a mix, I guess, then of Google products or Google linked products and, and competitors. Uh, what Are you not afraid, though, uh, with this kind of a, a ruling that Google Shopping, for example, could decide just to not take part in the EU market and then a lot of traffic that Google brings to f various companies uh, could be left in the lurch? It happened with Google News in Spain. It's happened in, in previous exact cases. Well, the traffic uh, to Google Shopping and to other companies, it comes from the Google General Search, the page that we all know when we type in something, looking for something, shoes, dress, gas grill, whatever. Uh, what comes up then is another product. It's a comparison uh, service so that we can see different uh, types of the product, different prices, if it's on store, what it will cost to get it delivered. And it's, of course, up to Google uh, to decide if they will keep having these products. But I think when it comes to general search uh, and the 90% of us that all uses it, I'm pretty sure that that will remain in Europe. Uh, because if you see the, the profit that it generates, it's very, very good business uh, to be so popular in Europe. Indeed, of course, your ruling was on Google Shopping, just one part of the Google services. But a lot of people see that this is the first step and there could be others that follow the Google Maps, Google Images, for example. They're also under investigation? Well, when you first have established that a company is, is dominant, uh, when you then look at into how do they treat other markets like Maps or Images or local search, well, then, of course, you have a specific starting point, but we would still have to do these cases specifically because they are different from the shopping comparison. What we do have is the two uh, uh, other Google cases, one where we think they have used Android in a way to, to make sure that they're also dominant when we all search on our mobile or our tablet, uh, and one that is about how third parties could at all take part in the advertising market when it comes to Google search. And those two cases, uh, they are quite advanced. Uh, but we're not with a decision yet. Indeed, one of the interesting things of this case is that there were a number of companies across in the US that made similar complaints at the US level against Google, but their complaints there didn't get very far. How do EU antitrust rules compare, if you like, with the American version? Are we a lot stricter when it comes to that? Or is it more in a digital age that we have changed things? Well, no, actually it has nothing to do with, uh, with the digital age. Uh, and some of the US companies, uh, they also complained uh, to us uh, here in Europe because they're also present in the European market. Uh, there are some differences in legislation, uh, but also differences in the market presence. Uh, actually, Google uh, general search doesn't have the same very, very strong market position in the US as it has here in Europe. Okay. Um, one thing a lot of people are wondering is the figure of 2.4 billion euros. You know, where did that come from? And then does Google already have to pay it? And who collects it? Where does that money go? Well, we have a set of guidelines. And, and the reason why it is a relatively uh, large fine is that this has been going on since 2008. And when most people were affected, it was markets that was uh, almost 420 European citizens. So it's a quite serious abuse. Uh, and Google will have to pay. Uh, also, if they go to court, then the fine goes into a, an ESCO account. So it will only be, be sort of finally paid uh, after the court ruling. When it finally gets paid, it gets first into the EU budget and then back to member states. So basically, a small part of this fine could end up with you. Um, and now, uh, do you have, I'm wondering, do you have EU support in this case uh, against Google from all 28 member states? Well, we of course uh, check with, uh, with national competition authorities. Uh, we have an advisory uh, council. Uh, and in this case, uh, all the member states uh, that participated in the meeting, uh, well, as far as I know, uh, they agreed in our decision.
Because that's one thing I imagine is quite hard in your office. It's not always been the case. I know when you asked Apple to pay back 13 billion euros and the Irish government, you know, accused of letting them off the hook in that tax payment, Ireland wasn't very happy. There's current negotiations going on with Gazprom, seen also as a dominant in the energy market. But Poland doesn't really want to find compromise in that situation. It prefers a fine. Yes, but you know this is not uh, this is not something that you you vote on. This is not a political decision. Uh, we live in a union based on the rule of law. So everything we do is based on facts, evidence, uh, the case law. Uh, we have to make markets work on that basis. Uh, and of course, we listen uh, because we do market testing. For instance, in in the Gazprom case, to see do market participants also find that commitments will work. And then we get a response. And that, of course, also informs our work uh, if we can do a commitment decision in order for people to have uh, gas to flow freely at affordable prices. Uh, but that is the balances that we will have to, uh, to, to hold. And we get a lot of differences, different responses. Uh, now, Ms. Vesuvier, I know that this Google ruling uh, took many years uh, to bring about. I believe it was, you know, the, the first complaint came well before you took office in 2014. Uh, I believe you're, you're, you do wish that your commission could put in these um, interminatory measures, quicker, quicker reactions, uh, you know, to actually get companies to stop a certain practice that is unfavourable before actually having to bring it to this level. What likelihood is there that you will gain power for the Commission uh, for competition? Well, as it is now, we can do it, but it actually never happens. Uh, and that's a striking difference compared to, for instance, the French Competition Authority, who has been uh, very clever in using interim measures. Uh, and I would like to know what is it that they do so well? Uh, because the point is, of course, that you have to stop harm from happening. Because if, if consumers are harmed, well, at a point it gets irreparable. Then there's nothing to, to do about it. Uh, but we're not at all there yet, uh, because we need to study intensively how do other uh, authorities do this uh, and how can it be done in a way based on the rule of law. And I imagine that's where the EU should have an advantage, should it not? We have 28 member states. If we share that information on competition, that could certainly go a long way. But that's also part of the problem is that a lot of the EU, when it comes to finance, when it comes to the economy, is not shared at all. That's something the French president, Emmanuel Macron, wants to see change. Is that something you'd like to see changed as well? Well, I see the benefits uh, of having a strong uh, European competence when it comes to finding uh, cartels and finding them when it comes to misuse of dominant position, as in the Google case, when it comes to make sure that we have a level playing field for companies to, to compete with one another. We have a very good working relationship and a very clear working relationship with the authorities of member states. Uh, maybe you shouldn't copy that, but I think it is, it's, it's a model to, con to consider. Uh, because it actually serves the citizens uh, quite well, uh, that we both can sort of police uh, national markets, but also make sure that things of European interest can be served, because we have decided to have strong powers uh, together uh, to find the companies that do not compete uh, uh, on the merits. Do you think, however, the EU integration could go too far? Because in one way, if we were all united more in terms of taxes, in terms of competition, there would be less loopholes available for these multinational companies and competition. Well, I think it is, it is, these are very important steps taken by the Commission uh, and, uh, and the Council in the last uh, two to three years. Uh, my colleague Pierre Moscovici, who is uh, uh, in charge of, of taxation, uh, he has uh, tabled very important uh, proposals to make our ta tax legislation uh, more harmonized in order to, to, uh, to stop the loopholes, to make every company contribute. There are so many companies who pay their taxes. Most of them are small and medium sized. They create the jobs, they pay the taxes, they take upon them apprentices. And I think it is important that it's not just most companies, but all companies that does that. Uh, very finally, Ms. Vestiger, of course, Google, another American company, it's not the first one that has faced EU fines. Uh, not afraid that this could further damage EU-US relations, which are already not on the best of grounds. Well, of course, there has been voices to say, well, this is uh, protectionist, this is against EU, uh, US companies. But that is not true. 
Not only because that, uh, that it will never hold up in court, because the court will he hear nothing about biases or politics or any of the thought. They want the fact of the case, the evidence, the case law. But also when you, you look at our casework, going back maybe 10 years, you can find no facts to support that we should have any bias. And I think that is very important, because the European single market should serve uh, the citizens in our role as customers. Uh, no matter your flag, no matter your ownership, that's the important thing to make the economy work. Okay, Ms. Margaret Vestager, thanks so much for taking time out to talk to us here on France 24. Thanks also, of course, to you at home for having watched this edition of Talking Europe. See you again next time.